Hi everyone, welcome to Meta Interview with Clara Gupi. Today I'm here with Punter. He is the co-founder of Nearverse Labs and also of the Rocket Boys NFC's collection. Hi Punter, how are you? Hey, doing good. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> I'm glad we're we're finally making this interview. It's very cool to know new projects on building on Near. And yeah, it's very nice to check it out and talk a bit about everything. Yeah, um, so thanks for having me here. Glad to be here. Good afternoon. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> to me, is the afternoon. To you, is the, the middle of the night. Well, actually, very late. <laughs> it, it, it's just past midnight, yes. Um, yeah. It's, it's Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Like I said. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I am. Um, let's start. Let's yeah. start talking a bit about your background. How you got here, uh, things that were important in your life that made you come to this new path, yeah. new, bright new world. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah, I'm from India, and I come from a beautiful beach city towards the south of India. Uh, I grew up here. I went to college here. So, um, at least my home, whole life years. But for, for the past 10 years, I started working in 2012 or thereabout. And yeah, I, I graduated in tech and I started working in tech right out of college. I worked in many cities all over India and a couple of years in Hong Kong as well. My experience is primarily banking and insurance. We built automation solutions. I worked as a developer to start to begin with in my early days and then started managing tech teams that build robotic automation solutions that uh, you know save uh, time and money for the banks so by automating tedious processes yeah so that is my experience in about me i i come from a family of uh, yeah, sportsmen <laughs> My dad and my granddad, they're all, uh, they're all teachers, they're sports teachers. So um, there's a natural tendency of interest in sports and uh, in all the cousins and all my cousins and uncles and my brother as well. Um, myself all as well, I played a lot of sport in college and in high school as well. Mostly it was uh, cricket. Um, volleyball and I even played softball at the state level my state and yeah that is uh, that's how it, that's how that's a little bit about me yeah the cool thing is that you're not that stereotype of the guy behind the computer never playing anything never moving your body you were there playing sports and also on the computer programming being a dev uh, Mm, yeah. All at once. <laughs> never, never been a geek. Never been a tech geek. Uh, I wouldn't claim to be. You know, I I would never claim to be one. <laughs> Probably yeah. I can never. That's nice. They, that's just my job. That's yeah. that's what I do for a living. That's cool. As usually, there's this stereotype, and you're not that. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. I wish I was my more active. Actually, I have to go back to do some sports because. I've been just a couch potato. <laughs> uh, and we are all from, from after the pandemic. Yeah, um, that's how I got there. Stop doing yeah. most of my physical activity. <laughs> like this, I mean, yeah, for myself as well. Myself, even my brothers, and most people I knew, um, they just they just put a pause on everything they do. Um, yeah. The exercise. Workouts, etc. It's it's changed us a lot. Yeah, I think that happened for most of us, including uh, most a bunch of people started working more in the computer and with in the internet and everything like this because of the pandemics. Like myself, for instance, because I I'm an artist and I wasn't much of a digital artist before. <laughs> <laughs> that happened because of the pandemics. It was a transition. But for yeah, you, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's the good part. Yeah, I learned to cook. 
Yeah, I learned a bunch of things. I actually, I, I think I never learned so much in so little time because all my mind was all in focused in one thing, <laughs> learning more. Yeah. So, but for you, uh, this tr big transition actually didn't happen, right? Because you were already working in tech development with uh, banks and investment. And I think that makes a lot of sense when it comes to blockchains and Web3, right? Yeah, um, yeah, I've always wanted to start building my own uh, tech company. Yeah. Um, but when I think I've always been investing in stocks, probably from my mid to early career, uh, I've been investing in stocks. But when it, com when it comes to Web3 and blockchain, it's only been probably a year, year and a half mm -hmm. since I've started. I, I've primarily started as an investor. Um, I initially did some spot trading, etc., and then and then we started uh, you know, trading NFTs about a year ago. Yeah, primarily in Solana and Binance. A couple of my colleagues, old colleagues and friends, we formed a, a little WhatsApp chat <laughs> where we talked about the upcoming projects and. Uh, yeah, it all. When you look back at it, it the, those conversations, I sometimes uh, go back and look at them. It, and it's just been a year, but how naive, how naive we have been. <laughs> we, but we used to invest in anything and everything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of scams. Thought, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, we do. And I think yeah, it's the price of growing so much, right? Everybody wants to jump in and be the next thing, yeah. but there's a lot of people that are just scams. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, maybe people start with good intentions, but then uh, they lose out, lose interest. Or yeah. so they just move on to another, so another glittering thing. <laughs> yeah, persevering is hard. You go, yes. you go there and do the, the your work, even the parts that are annoying, and to, and you gotta do it yourself in the beginning because the project is small, and people don't have this in mind when they do their stuff. <laughs> yeah, myself, I've been a part of probably as an investor. I've been I have invested in probably more than. Uh, at least 70, 7,200 7, projects that have wow. either completely run <laughs> wow. or they are not active anymore. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, yeah, along the line, I've uh, realized that this space, yes, this space rewards those who invest, but those, um, those who are really rewarded are the ones that contribute you know the developers or the builders that you say um it, it doesn't necessarily you do not necessarily have to be a developer or a project owner you contribute in in, in any capacity like an art like an artist uh, the community manage, manages yeah. anything I mean, this space uh, doesn't judge you on where you come from uh, what your what your qualifications are that's that's, that's a good thing that's uh, it, it gives everybody an equal opportunity wherever you're from. Yeah. yeah, you just have to go there and do your thing, keep doing. Yeah, all, <laughs> yeah, all, that, all that works is uh, it's your talent. So, yeah, that's that's when I, I've uh, realized I mean, why not uh, take I mean, start something on our own. I mean, I've been doing this for a while, building products for a big, big corporations, big corporations, why not build build these good products in Web3 where, where you'll be rewarded firsthand. And then that's the idea. And I got together with a couple of uh, my friends mm -hmm. and one of them, I worked them in, in the past, worked with them in the past. And one of them is uh, Bio. He's uh, really active in, uh, actively developing in, for projects on Solana. Yeah. Big one. Uh, like D gods and uh, Blocksmith Labs, and one other friend. Um, they both are uh, really hands-on dev devs. So, so they 
they know the space in and out well better than myself so they have been um, they they do all the tech decisions i would say <laughs> and uh, i take care of all the functional side cool yeah so that's how it started awesome and uh where is this inspiration and this motivation to start your own project came from like oh i don't want to participate in something that is already built i want to do my own thing like i said you always wanted to do that but why do you think that you wanted to create your own project your own projects actually you know because you have universe labs and rock boys how, how did it happen i, I would say there are different projects this is uh, i would look at this as a <laughs> startup that is uh, building Yeah, you can talk about them both if you want. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's um the NFT collection I would look at it more like a fundraiser for building products. We made some good amount of funding so that will help us build some good products. We already built a few. I'll talk more about the job due date. I did first ask the question that you asked me. So, why I have I started in that three if i had to go and start my own company probably web2 you already need to be someone you need to have either you need to have the funding or uh, you need to have the connections etc but like it's like we talked about earlier in web3 you you do not necessarily have to be someone already you, you, you can just start with nothing so that is one of the other drives for us that has encouraged us to start in web3 So, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a very democratic space. Because actually it is like this, uh is a very new space. So you have plenty of space to build, you're saying, and create yeah. your community and take grants and and yeah, if you show your work. Yeah, democratic most of the time. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's not pretend <laughs> some weird things happen everywhere this happens because we're human and so yeah not every not everywhere yeah. is this yeah, but... dream <laughs> i'm sorry yeah, i interrupted you yeah. no it's um but one thing that we i strong firmly believe is um the future is decentralization yeah is the future um i mean i don't i wouldn't say it's limited to one blockchain but Yeah. I, so yeah, uh why did you choose to build on near protocol? Um so sure, there are three three reasons really. Um one the tech is obviously great. Uh with near we can almost draw parallels between near and Solana in terms of tech, you know, the found, founders being from similar backgrounds the tech and they both Solana and near both compete for the same um same thing same user base um, user base from ethereum so yeah it was it was a choice between solana and ethereum for us and uh we we wanted to be yeah the second reason is uh, of course we wanted to be early adopters at uh, early adopters with near by the time we decided to build probably we had this conversation um, on which blockchain to choose in early february this year so by the time it was it was really early i mean uh like they say one month one one month in in web3 is equal to five years in oh yeah <laughs> the real world so yeah it feels like really it's been ages but yeah it uh, we want to be early adopters so yeah that is one of the driving factors to choose near mm-hmm. and the second i mean the third reason is uh, definitely the communities uh we've me personally i've been as an investor in multiple blockchains like you said solana yeah. binance and even ethereum projects so but, but when i came to near uh, the communities were small and really close in it <clears throat> yeah. and i should say there is zero to less less to zero toxicity um when you when you see i don't point fingers at any uh, particular blockchain or any projects but 
I, I experienced that uh, toxicity in some instances, but when it came to near, I mean, it it was people were very welcoming. Probably, uh, I really felt comfortable here. I mean, if yeah. I if I did something, if I built something, it I felt it should be in near. Yeah, I like it very much in here. The community is very helpful when you need uh, when someone new comes and has doubts and want to know more about it. People are very uh, welcoming and they explain it to you in a very patient way what, how things work. And there are plenty of tools also for you to get used to. And like if you if you're starting a project or a DAO, you have multiple tools to make it. It's very nice. And also, I, I'm not a dev, but I listen to it every time. Everyone talks a lot about the tech in Near. Like, oh, the technology is very cool, it's very useful, it's very fast, it's cheap. So, yeah, let's use it. <laughs> yes, you're right. I mean, um, when we started off and we, we built a prototype, of the metaverse and uh, there's suddenly a lot of attention on us and and there were really a lot of uh, established projects that came forward mm-hmm. and uh, tried to, uh, and they were open to have conversations with us to know if we needed any help etc that, that that was really welcoming I mean, and that, that's when we we felt i mean that uh, we made the right choice choosing near and on top of everything, of course, I mean, we would be lying if we said uh, the foundation didn't play a part, the, the, the grants did not play a part. Uh, it does. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that, was, that was the, that closed us. <laughs> that's the deal for us. So that's really motivating uh, with my, the new foundation grants. So yeah, it took a while for us to, for the, foundation to notice us and notice our application but we've started our conversations with the foundation recently and we are we are very hopeful that we will be getting that plan awesome. it'll be really helpful yeah. that's great yeah because uh we can pretend that we can work for free all the time because we have absolutely bills to pay and people to pay because you want people to work and be rewarded also so you won't just say hey i have a cool project but you work for free <laughs> nobody wants that yeah. <laughs> actually there yeah, are people that are willing to do it but it would be a sacrifice for everyone involved because you have to live <laughs> yeah, we, just, we just wanted to uh, be a very small team yeah. Initially, we started with uh, three three of us, two devs, myself, and and one other friend. He he started contributing himself as a community manager. And yeah. We hired two more guys to be our mods. That was it for me. But then <laughs> it grew and it grew and grew. Now it is we have we have uh, fifteen people working for us. Wow. We are a team of fifteen. Awesome. Yeah. That's a good sign. <laughs> I hope you grow bigger, yeah, and better. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it also I mean it mostly owes to us being a multifaceted project. Once we started off as a metaverse project, metaverse homes, uh, but then we saw this opportunity of building something on the infrastructure side. And then we we got the opportunity to partner with Blocksmith Labs from Solana. They have this cool whitelist management platform. Nice. Uh, they call it Much. So we we partnered with them. We built we brought that uh, that is a really good innovation. We bought that to Nier. We built the Nier compatibility to it. We manage onboarding projects to it. It is a really a uh, really cool utility for both projects and. Uh, NFT, NFT traders. So yeah, that is uh, so. That is when I, we 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 didn't completely pivot to just building utility utility software, but uh, then yeah, we grew. We grew even before we made any money. Yeah. <laughs> so we had to we had to have uh, 
these uh, metaverse guys, metaverse architects, a couple of them. We had to have the Rust devs, and uh, the community grew instantly after uh, we we announced the partnership with the big Solana project. So yeah. Then all of, all of a sudden, there were so many eyes on us. So it was inevitable. Yeah, it's great. Actually, I'm very excited. I, I will certainly check it out, this your utility NFT thing, because I'm always thinking about new projects to build. So yeah, I'll check it out. That'll be cool. Thank you. Uh, so now to talk about the metaverse, because you said you were working with the metaverse, and so you must have your thoughts on the metaverse. And how do you think that having a virtual space uh, will help projects to grow and you, actually first let's talk about yourself how do you think uh what do you think about the metaverse and how do you think that will help you grow your project so metaverse itself is a fascinating concept um, it probably will change the way how we interact with each other or it it may not i mean at this point uh, we can't really say it really it's really a loop uh, but with all the projects that have, uh, you know, raking in millions of dollars in funding to you know, build these uh, virtual worlds. It's, it's um, me personally, I like it. I like uh, interacting people, interacting with people virtually, you know, doing anything else. It, it, fast, it, it really excites me. Mm-hmm. That, is, that is one of the reasons we started as a metaverse-centric project. So by the time we started this, there was no, uh, there was no dedicated metaverse project. I'd say but there, there were a couple of projects building on it, mm-hmm. but they again, uh, I, I didn't see anything significant uh, on the metaverse side. So that is why we chose metaverse. And will how will it help the projects? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's really tough to say. Um, again, it comes to the amount of utility that you provide. I mean, it's really hard to provide any utility, uh, any benefit for your investors, your holders in uh, the metaverse. So it's really tough to um, attract people. And the second thing, it costs a lot of money to build something really cool. Yeah. Uh, with We are a very really small project. Near is a very small blockchain and our budgets are really low. So if the, it comes down to the quality again, and when you have something, somebody spending millions of dollars in building this uh, this exotic virtual world, and uh, you have this small project on your protocol buildings are trying to build, make something. <laughs> so it's really tough to convince people to invest in you. Yeah. Uh, it comes down to the interest. So, but the idea is to for us is to go from ground up. We didn't start from day one saying that we're going to be building this crazy metaverse, make crazy virtual world. But we started started off with with homes. So we are giving every NFT holders uh, a virtual home, which will oh. have uh, yeah, um, which will have near world compatibility. So you can connect your new wallet to your home and display the NFTs that you have in the wallet. And they, these house will be of four types. I mean, it, uh, your house will be allocated based on the rarity of your NFTs. Mm-hmm. We have segmented the four types, like I said. And each one uh, is the smallest to biggest. So the biggest ones are very few. They're rare. There's only 200 of them. So, and then it, it increases the total our total collection size and the collection size is two thousand. So yeah, there's going to be two thousand homes. The idea is to build first deliver these four types of metaverse homes with the wallet connectivity, and etc. So we so that was the that was just that was the initial idea. But then we wanted to add more to it. We wanted to um, add a game a gamification concept to yeah, it. Yeah, cool. So what we did is uh, instead of just having a, a view navigating through your virtual gallery home, mm-hmm. what we did, we had a 3D character, a 3D character walk through it, uh, uh, which will be 
your NFT, your Rocket Boys NFT. Oh. Your Rocket Boys NFT is not just a JPEG. So it'll it'll be um it'll be in a FBX format. And I think it'll be in a couple of formats. One is FBX, it's the 3D model, yeah. and the other is uh, GLTF. So I think that they'll be used interchangeably. So that will be used to navigate within the metaverse homes. So that's, uh, we added that cool feature. We thought of adding that, adding that feel cool feature. We have the demo up on our website. You can check it out, neoslabs.io. Yeah. Oh, I saw it. It's like a spaceship, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that, cool. is, yeah that is one of the, one of the types, you know, one of the four types. So our uh, second build, second demo will be live next Monday. It comes along with the 3D model and uh, it, it, it demos the wallet connectivity as well. Cool. So yeah, the idea is to expand, first deliver these metaverse homes and then, you know, secure enough funding to actually expand to the, uh, the outside environment and build an actual metaverse city. Oh, awesome. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah I want to see that. It'll be awesome. Yeah, we are excited to build uh, deliver that. Go team. <laughs> so, uh, what are you working on now? What's your What are your plans to for the future of Nearverse Labs and Rocket Boys? Because you said they are two different projects, so you can talk about each one separately yep. if you feel like. Yeah, sure. Um... Again, it's we're building utility software. We we already have our product live, which is Vulcan Whitelist plot platform. We already have um, three thousand and four hundred unique wallets registered with us. Uh, we've had twenty to twenty two projects that we onboarded and had given away more than five thousand whitelists um, white whitelist claim through our platform. So for a small blockchain such as Nears and in a in a market like this, in a bear market, we should be really proud of what we have done so far, the number of users and the, the growth that we are seeing. We are targeting to to add the idea is to add more features. At the moment, it is just a whitelist management platform. But uh, we we just not, we'd not we'd like for it to be more than that. We'd like to incorporate more features like, uh, you know, uh, raf NFT raffles, um, whitelist raffles, and uh, NFT options as well. So that uh, to start with, and there is one more product idea that that is going to be a great add-on to the whitelist platform. Mm, it so at the moment, the utility of the whitelist platform for projects is only until. They mint out. I mean, after the after the mint out, uh, they pretty much do not have anything to do with it. So, we have a really cool idea, which I cannot talk about. Oh, much. okay. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, owing to the competition, everybody wants a piece of oh, okay. <laughs> no. okay. Oh, yeah, that is that's, that's the thing that we discussed with the foundation. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, we will we, have to we wait, discussed. guys. We'll have to wait. <laughs> uh, not for long, hopefully. Um, if we get the funding we're after, uh, we have discussed that idea with the foundation. They really awesome. liked it. So, yeah, I really hope that they fund this idea so that we can start go ahead and start building it in the next uh, month or so and probably get it go live in. Couple of months, maybe. Yeah. Hopefully. Cool. Well, I'm following that, you, so I hope I get this notice <laughs> in time. <laughs> yeah, this is this is the first that I've talked about it. That's cool. So we haven't had space to space in 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 a while now. <laughs> so this is my first it's first public interaction in a while. Oh, it's okay. So besides I'm cheering for you. <laughs> 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 yeah, so that is uh, that's one end of it. Um, we are we're also having me me being from an automation background. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I did uh, 
than that for a living for a while so i i do not like manual tedious processes so so i in my free time i i build some bots one of them is a pay uh, near payout bot where uh, all my staff my 16 staff get paid automatically so there is a spreadsheet with uh, with with their salaries filled out and the bot is triggered by itself um <laughs> every sunday evening awesome. that's cool <laughs> so, so yeah we we've done that internally and there is there is an idea to you know uh, add more make more features to it and uh, sell it like a service yeah that that's awesome yeah cuz the it's very tedious really to to do all the 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 spreadsheets and then paying everyone creating invoices or creating um uh, like we on the DAOs we use Astro so you have to do all the requests and yeah it's, it's a very boring so we we are lucky we just have 16 <laughs> staff they imagine a project having 50 staff members yeah. and they have to do a, do a net prep you have to send it to every one of them and it's quite, it's quite tedious <laughs> yeah we here we are thinking of adding more uh, features to it uh, that is loki a side project i mean i i work on that individually so that is <laughs> that's more of a side project that's cool and yeah the matter was forms of course they it is it's been ongoing for a while now uh, we drop cool previews on our discord and twitter once in a while and like i said the version the demo second demo will be live next monday so you can check that out so that's that's where we are with our products awesome that's good it's a bunch of stuff i'm excited to see it uh yeah now these questions are more about the future like uh what legacy would you like to leave for future creatives devs builders on this space on the web3 space mm. is it Okay. um so like like we discussed at the very early in this uh, interview yeah it doesn't matter what level you're contributing and um, it not everybody has to be the developer mm, i don't develop myself i i i just make people do things <laughs> i just get people to do things <laughs> um, yeah you can just start contributing you, you can just start taking work as it comes it doesn't have to be big the paycheck doesn't have uh, to be huge but um perseverance it pays off i should say that yeah. i can give you a cool story <laughs> <laughs> about our guy i know on solana mm, his name is alex i i know i knew him from the days we uh, we were uh, dao members from big arts i i was an investor there so he was he started off as a uh, as you know a mod a moderator there mm-hmm. he's he's an engineer by himself at stored so he, he he didn't get paid initially he worked as a free he worked for free as a mod and then one day he he decided to build something for the gods just like that and then uh, they really liked the idea they really liked the product that he built and then they they gave him an opportunity to join the team as a developer and then from there it in a matter of 3 uh, months he grew and he became the lead developer in that project in wow. this uh, to give you the context the gods is uh, probably the, the project with the biggest market cap on solana biggest um, nft market uh, nft project wow. and then from there he started his own project uh, it is blast it's called blast labs in a matter of 6 months he became <laughs> um a founder of a project that is um, worth multi million dollars wow and you know it all, all this happens in the span of 7 months and you see where where he started he started as a free he started to work for free as a moderator on discord on an nft project he started small he, he took the opportunity he made connections <laughs> So yeah, take it as they come. Yeah, that's awesome. It's a actually a very good story. It's a 
started to cheer up people that are oh i don't get anything i'm not graduated as a accept yz thing but yeah you can come you can build and if you show your work show your for real because that matters more than what's your graduation skills yeah um, so yeah i, I would say not, not in not every one of us is going to be a million millionaire oh, of course I, yeah <laughs> Yeah, and my my idea is just to just take the opportunity. Try. Because, yeah. Try it, Lynn. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Hunter, thank you so much for that. The interview was awesome, and it was very nice to know your project. And I'll keep my eye on it. Like, oh, I want to see what you're doing in the future. It would be great to follow your tragic trajectory. Yeah, sometimes I forget yeah. words on English. It happens. <laughs> like, likewise. <laughs> yeah, we're not English native people. <laughs> no, not at all. English is like third language. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's an effort. Uh, yeah, yeah, I I enjoyed talking to you. Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. And me, we'll talk soon in the future again. Yeah, I'll thank come back you. for updates. Hopefully, it'll be awesome to follow you up. Thank Have you. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Bye.